This is Mary from The Daily Cell. Top stitches are meant to be seen. And whether they're for construction or whether they're decorative, whether it's wobbly or straight, it's on display. And you would think that sewing a neat line of stitches would be rather easy, but it isn't always that simple. But there are a few things you can do to make your top stitching top notch. So if you're ready, let's go. So you want to consider the color of your thread against your fabric. You might want to go with a low contrasting, um, sort of matching but not quite, or you might want to go with a matching thread. It'll give you a different look depending on what you're after. They also make a variegated thread in different hues if you have a printed fabric and you want your thread, your top stitches to kind of blend in. You can also do something in the monochromatic family of your fabric. This looks nice for a little bit dressier sportswear. You could go with a little bit darker, more matching, or even a lighter thread than your main fabric. In the same color family, but a little bit off is a nice subtle look. Just remember that the more contrast your thread has against your fabric, the more it will stick out and the more it will need to be precise. In the end, the color you choose, whether it's for decoratives or not, is up to you. Now the type of thread you use also makes an impact on your stitches. You can use an all-purpose thread, which is what you use to construct a garment, or you could double the all-purpose thread and get a little bit thicker look, or you can use a top stitching thread for really maximum impact on your top stitches. It is thicker than the all-purpose thread, as you can see, so it does pop off the fabric more. And then there's craft thread, which is about the same thickness as top stitching thread, but it's glazed. So it's really good for hand sewing, like boro or sashiko, and it's good also for luggage stitch. But the top stitching doesn't come, the top stitching thread doesn't come in a lot of colors, so doubling up your thread is a great idea if you can't find a color top stitching thread that you want. And how you would double up your thread is if you don't have a second spool, you can just make a bobbin from your spool and then put them both on your machine and thread them through the machine, but not the needle, one at a time. So thread it through the machine, but leave it out of the needle until you get them both in there. Then put the ends together and thread it through the eye of the needle as if it were one thread. So what type of needle you use will also have an impact on your top stitches. There's universal, microtex, top stitch needles, and the jeans or denim needle. The universal needle is what we, it's like our all purpose needle. It's what we use mostly for construction almost on all fabrics. It is a little bit duller and will give you a wobbly stitch sometimes if your fabric is not uh, tightly woven like this one is. It's because it's a little dull and moves the fibers. Now the Microtex needle is very sharp and it'll actually pierce the fibers. But if you don't use the right size, like my needle was too uh, heavy for this fabric, it will make also wobbly stitches, as you can see. Then there is the top stitch needles, and they are made to work with top stitch thread. The eye of the needle is a little bit bigger to accommodate that thicker thread. The jeans needle is very, very similar, if not the same, to the top stitch needle. It has a little bit bigger eye for the bigger thread, but it is made for heavy duty fabric like denim. Now your throat plate has guides etched into it, but they're just not enough for very precise top stitching. So get a see-through ruler, the thinnest one you have, and line your needle up with how far over you want it to be, your, your seam allowance type thing. And then use a cross line on the see-through ruler and line that up with the throat plate or something on your machine that is you know is straight. And then with a long piece of painter's tape, because painter's tape won't leave residue on your machine when you remove it, put that painter's tape aligned with the ruler. 
Then when you go to sew, the edge of your fabric will just line up against that nice, long, highly visible guide that you've just made. This is especially great when you want to sew a couple or a few inches away from the edge of the fabric. Another option is some feet will have guides on them that are adjustable, or if you have a modern machine like I do now, you can actually move the needle over. This is only good for um, narrow, narrow amounts. Another option is a walking foot or another kind of presser foot that will hold this quilt guide bar. The guide bar is great for when you're top stitching inside fabric and not along the edge. You would chalk line where you want and then the guide bar would follow the chalk line. And then another option, of course, is some presser feet happen to be the right width that you want and you could use the presser foot as a guide or they have marks on them to help guide you with the right amount that you want. The first thing you want to do though when you're top stitching is to sew slowly and to keep your fabric smooth. Then at the beginning of fabric, do you see how the foot will tilt up. You want to keep that foot level so that you have nice even stitches. So use a scrap of fabric, fold it to about the same thickness as the fabric you're working on there. And then if you place that behind the needle on the back part of the presser foot, then lower you can see that your foot is more even if not even. And then go ahead and sew and you'll get nice Keep it smooth and go nice and slow for you and you'll get nice even stitches. When you get to a bulky intersection uh, that you have to go over, again that foot, the presser foot is going to start to tilt upward. So you can do the same thing that you did at the beginning. Leave the needle in the fabric, raise the presser foot and put a scrap of folded fabric behind the needle under the presser foot or you could fold the thing you're working on itself so it's about the same thickness again behind the needle so you don't sew it down lower that presser foot and continue sewing on so keep the foot level keep the fabric smooth and keep the speed under your control When you get to the end of your top stitching and at the beginning, don't do the habit we all have of pressing that button and taking a back tack. Instead, you want to leave about a six inch long thread tail at the front and at the beginning because you can see the back tack leaves a bulky bunch of stitches there. So leave the thread tails and I'll show you how to get rid of them. One option is to take a hand needle and to thread the tails individually and then stick the needle in between the two layers You're not coming through go over about an inch the needle exits then you will pull slightly a little tug on that thread tail clip close to the fabric surface and then the thread tail disappears you'll do the same for the bobbin thread the other way is to knot your thread and to do that you have to bring the top thread to the back. So you'll pull on the bobbin thread and a little loop of the top thread will come through. I usually put a needle in that loop to get the top thread to come all the way to the back. And then you knot the tails together in a little square knot. Right over left, left over right, and then clip close to the knot. And they are nice, clean beginning and end and not this bulky old mess. And of course, you always want to press your stitches. It just sets the thread. It makes the stitches look nice and crisp. It always looks good. As with any new skill you're trying to learn or you really want to get good at, practice, 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 right? The saying is practice makes perfect. So take some time and practice. 
If you have any questions about top stitching, please put them in the comments below. I'll be sure to reply. If you like this video, give us a like. And hey, while you're at it, why not subscribe? Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.